Hi, this is Eric Mizells with DCI. In a previous video, we covered the LWD install, configuration, and upload. So now let's continue exploring the Digitrack LWD application with a two-part discussion of the items on the LWD toolbar and how to create chart annotations and utility flags. Let's start part one. In a previous LWD video titled Installation, Configure, and Upload, we already showed how to add an F5 receiver to your device list. Once this has been added, you don't need to perform that step again and the list remains populated. This makes future data log uploads simple since it's already been configured with that F5 receiver. You can manage multiple F5 receivers and simply switch between them as needed for your uploads. Let's launch LWD from the shortcut on the desktop. I'm going to double click to maximize in the title bar here. And now I'm going to open a sample data log by clicking the file menu. And as you can see, LWD retains a list of the last opened files. And that's pretty handy. I'm going to go ahead and click the top one since this is the sample I want to use. I'm going to maximize by double clicking the title bar. And now let's begin our discussion by browsing the LWD toolbar from the left to the right. All of the functions in this toolbar are also available through the standard menu. And all the toolbar icons have additional information when you hover over them with your mouse. Starting at the far left of the toolbar, we have the new button. I'm going to click that. And this launches the dialog box to select our data log document type before we begin an upload from the F5. As you can see, we have our choice between a drill data, pressure tension, and a steering document. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And next we have our open button. Clicking this takes us to our last open folder. By default, after installing LWD, this location is the DCI folder in your Windows My Document folder. I'm going to go ahead and back up one folder to that default folder. And here we are in the DCI folder. This is a good folder to work from and also to save to, and it also contains sample files that are installed with the LWD application. And these can be helpful to see some good examples of some finished charts. As you see here, these are all drill data files. And this drop-down box allows you to change between drill data files, ending in a .dl5 extension, to pressure tension files, which I'm going to click, and observe that they all end in a .tt5 extension, and steering files, which end in st5. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this. And next is the Save button. It's a good idea to save your chart right after uploading. And if it's the first save that you've done, it will automatically open up the Save As dialog box for your first save. I like to save the original chart before doing any editing or any manipulation of the data because there is no undo function in LWD and you want to preserve your original data. So next to the right is the export button, and this allows us to export data log files into a CSV format. I just click that, and you can see that whatever file name you add has been appended with a .csv extension. You can open a CSV file with several programs, but the most popular is Excel. Canceling out of this to the right, we see the industry standard blue B. And this represents, for LWD, the Bluetooth device list, which I'm gonna now click the blue B, and here we are at the device list. As you can see, the F5 receiver that I've already entered has the Bluetooth ID in the address field and the last four digits of the serial number, which I like to use as the Bluetooth device name, already populated to the list. I can close this and move on. The first of a few grayed out icons, which are grayed out for a reason, is next to the right. 
This icon is the connection icon. And to see it, we're going to start a new data log chart. Because the connection icon starts with a blank data log as it's expecting an upload from the F5 to populate the chart. So I selected New from the shortcut, and now I'm going to select OK on Drill Data, and now I'm at a blank data log chart. And as you can see now, the previously grayed icon for the connection dialog box is now available to us. I'm going to click this, and now we see the familiar Drill Data Log Upload Control dialog box, which we worked with before when uploading data from the F5 receiver to the LWD application. I have my AmpedRF device in the USB port, and I've already installed the drivers, of course, so I see the Silicon Labs entry in my serial port connection dropdown. I have the Bluetooth radio button lit up with a blue dot, and I have the device name, which is the four digits of the serial number, to the right of it. I'm going to go ahead and click to close, and to the right, we have the import Eclipse data log file toolbar shortcut. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And if I had any Eclipse files in this folder, they would be present here. And you can see down here next to the file name is the file type dropdown. And it's looking for Eclipse version 2.6, that's the data log version, 2.6 files which end in a .dld extension. LWD is backwards compatible with the Eclipse. You can perform data log uploads from the Eclipse receiver to LWD in addition to importing Eclipse version 2.6 data log files into the current version of LWD. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this. And the next button we have is the Site Information box. I can enter this one of two ways. I can click this button as my shortcut, or I can double click in this Site Information square on the main data log itself. I'm going to go ahead and click the toolbar shortcut. And as you can see, the Site Information box opened and allows us to add job site, customer, contractor, and general comments that we want to associate with this active data log session. All this information also will appear on the printed report. We're going to leave it blank, and when we get to the printed report, you'll see that it's blank, but this can all be populated with data, and it's a good idea to do that. I'm going to cancel out right now. And moving on, the next toolbar button is Display Units. Clicking that, we can see we can change the display units for depth, pitch, and temperature in addition to force pressure. Temperature is not active, so you currently can't use this. We can temporarily change any of these display units by simply selecting the radio button and clicking OK, or you can permanently change any of these values to your defaults by clicking the Set Default button after you've made changes in this box. And anytime you open up a data log chart, whatever value you've changed to will now be your current default. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And now I need to go back to our populated data log chart because we're dealing with a few more grayed out icons. So closing this, we're back to our sample. And I know I moved quickly, but this job detail button was previously grayed out. And now because we're on an active populated data log chart, it is available to us. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And as you can see, this opens the same Drill Data Log Job Information dialog box, which you first encounter after a successful upload from the F5 receiver. It's not necessary at that time to make any of the changes immediately after an upload because you can always access this information from the LWD application after an upload.
I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this now. In addition to being able to edit your job details through the Drill Data Log Job Information dialog box, you can also edit or change any of these individual data points by simply right-clicking on them. I'm going to go to the Rod ID 1, right-click, and select Edit. This gives me the ability to edit rod length, pitch, and depth, in addition to adding any comment that I want to associate with that rod ID that I edited. You may want to add a comment just simply explaining why you edited that rod ID. I'm going to go ahead and just add a comment. After you add a comment, you can see that your comment shows up in the field on the data points. I'm going to go ahead and open another one of these and edit additional information besides the comment. Let's say I want to change our pitch to, say, a negative 12 value and click Corrected Pitch in the comment field. Then click OK. As you see, we have an O next to the pitch field indicating that that field has been edited. Sometimes your edits will show up as an O, sometimes they will show up as an E, and other times they may show up as an asterisk or another symbol, but it is always notated when an edit is made. Because any time a value is changed from the original, we permanently display that on our data log chart. Okay. Almost to the end of part one, to the right, we have our data flags, which is grayed out. This is grayed out because it's only for use with a pressure tension document. This concludes part one. Now please stay with us for part two of this discussion, which you can find on our YouTube channel.